Hello, everyone. This is Father Michael Lilly. Um, today, I, I want to share a little bit of a news. I uh, recently uh, started a new web page, a, a Facebook page, uh, entitled Orthodox Manliness. Uh, and I'll, I'll put the link in the description box below if you want to uh, go ahead and, and uh, follow that and like and share that. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to be taking a little bit of a, a, a new direction uh, with some of these videos. Uh, they'll all be offering the same type of videos uh, as I have in the past as well, but just offering a new uh, direction and with a few more videos uh, on the topic of Orthodox manliness, about uh, men having a Christian masculinity and a uh, becoming more uh, leaders and servants, uh, both within society uh, and church. I'm doing this because I see this uh, as a high need, especially among uh, younger men today who've reached out to me several times looking for guidance. And what I'd like to do is offer you um, some ways that, some qualities that uh, Orthodox Christian men should uh, have uh, in their life in order to live up to their full intended purpose. Before that, I want to share to you with you a video uh, that was produced by uh, On the Tucker Carlson Show. Please, I know it's... It, it, don't take it uh, as uh, any ideological bent why I'm sharing Tucker Carlson, but I am showing his video because it is particularly um, uh, clear on what's going on, that there is an issue with uh, men, uh, specifically in the West, in America, and he provides a lot of statistics and evidence that shows that we have a big issue on our hands. Uh, so please uh, take a look at this this video. Uh, of uh, from the Tucker Carlson show from uh, several years ago and then at the end I'm going to offer you the qualities that I think will help uh, save uh, our society and and help uh, young men grow into the leaders uh, and the masculine Christian uh, uh, warriors that they're intended to be here every Wednesday in the month of March focusing on men in America the signs are everywhere. If you're a middle-aged man, you probably know a peer who has killed himself in recent years, at least one. If you're a parent, you may have noticed that your daughter's friends seem a little more on the ball than your son's. They get better grades, they smoke much less marijuana, they spend less time playing video games, they go to more prestigious colleges. If you're an employer, you may have noticed that your female employees show up on time. The young men often don't. And of course, if you live in this country, you've just seen a horrifying series of mass shootings, far more than we've ever had. Women didn't do that. In every case, the shooter was a man. Something ominous is happening to men in America. Everyone who pays attention knows that. What's odd is how rarely you hear it publicly acknowledged. Our leaders pledge to create more opportunities for women and girls, whom they imply are failing. Men don't need help. They're the patriarchy. They're fine, more than fine. But are they fine? Here are the numbers. Start with the most basic, life and death. The average American man will die five years before the average American woman. One of the reasons for this is addiction. Men are more than twice as likely as women to become alcoholics. They're also twice as likely to die of a drug OD. In New Hampshire, one of the states hardest hit by the opioid crisis, 73% of overdose deaths were men. But the saddest reason for shortened lifespans is suicide. 77% of all suicides in America are committed by men. The overall rate is increasing at a dramatic pace. Between 1997 and 2014, there was a 43% rise in suicide deaths among middle-aged American men. The rates are highest among American Indian and white men who kill themselves at about 10 times the rate of Hispanic and black women. You often hear America's incarceration crisis. Well, that's almost exclusively a male problem, too. Over 90% of inmates are men. Now, these problems are complex, but we know that they start young. And relative to girls, boys are failing in school. More girls than boys graduate high school, considerably more go to and graduate from college. In schools at every level, boys account for the overwhelming majority of discipline cases. One study found that fully one in five high school boys had been diagnosed with some form of hyperactivity disorder. That's compared with just one in 11 girls. Many of them were medicated for it. The long-term health effects of those medications, not fully understood, but they do appear to include depression in later life. 
Women now decisively outnumber men in graduate school. They earn the majority of doctoral degrees. They're now the majority of new enrollees in both law and medical schools. For men, the consequences of failing in school are long-term and profound. Between 1979 and 2010, working age men with only high school degrees saw their real hourly wages drop about 20%. Over the same period, high school educated women saw their wages rise. The decline of the industrial economy disproportionately hurt men. There are now seven million working age men in America who don't work. They've dropped out of the labor force. Nearly half of them take pain medication on any given day. That is the highest rate in the world by far. Far fewer young men get married than did just a few decades ago, and fewer stay married. About one in five American children live now only with their mothers. That's double the rate of 1970. Millions more boys growing up without fathers. Young adult men are now more likely to live with a parent than they are to live with a spouse or a partner. That is not the case for young women. Single women buy their own homes at more than twice the rate of single men. More women than men now have driver's licenses. Whenever gender differences come up in public debate, the so-called wage gap seems to dominate the conversation. You've heard it. A woman makes 77 cents for every dollar a man earns. That's a statistic that you'll hear a lot. Presidents have repeated it, many candidates. It's everywhere. And yet that number compares all American men to all American women across all professions. No legitimate social scientist would consider that a valid or meaningful measure. The number doesn't mean anything. It's intentionally misleading. It's a talking point. Once you compare men and women with similar experience, working the same hours and similar jobs for the same period of time, that's the only way you can measure it, the gap all but disappears. In fact, it may invert. One study using census data found that single women in their 20s living in metropolitan areas now earn 8% more on average than their male counterparts. By the way, the majority of managers in the workplace are now women. Women, on average, are scoring higher on IQ tests than men are. Even physically, men are falling behind. A recent study found that almost half of young men failed the Army's entry-level physical fitness exam during basic training. Fully 70% of American men are now overweight or obese, as compared to 59% of American women. Perhaps most bafflingly and terrifyingly, men seem to be becoming less male, fundamentally measurably. Sperm counts, for example, across the West have plummeted. They're down almost 60 percent since the early 1970s. Scientists don't know why this is. Testosterone levels in men have also fallen precipitously. One study found that average levels of male testosterone dropped by 1 percent every year after 1987, and it's not related to age. In other words, the average 40-year-old man in 2017 would have testosterone levels 30 percent lower than the average 40-year-old man in 1987. There is no upside to this trend. Lower testosterone levels in men are associated with depression, lethargy, weight gain, decreased cognitive ability. Nothing like this has ever happened to a population this big. So you'd think we'd want to know exactly why, what's going on, how do we fix it? And yet the media ignore that story. It's considered a fringe topic somehow. Nor is it, believe it or not, a priority in the scientific research establishment. We checked and we couldn't find a single NIH funded study on why testosterone levels are falling. We did find a study on, quote, pubic hair grooming prevalence and motivation among women in the US so those are the numbers, and they paint a very clear picture. American men are failing in body, in mind, and in spirit. This is a crisis. Yet our leaders pretend it's not happening. And in fact, they tell us the opposite is true. Women are victims. Men are oppressors. To question that assumption is to risk punishment. Even as women far outpace men in higher education, for example, Virtually every college campus supports a women's studies department whose core goal is to attack male power. Our politicians and business leaders internalize and amplify that message. Men are privileged, women are oppressed. Hire and promote and reward accordingly. Now that would be fine if it were true, but it's not true. At best, it's an outdated view of an America that no longer exists. At worst, it's a pernicious lie. Either way, ignoring the decline of men does not help anyone. Men and women need each other. One cannot exist without the other. That is elemental biology. It's also the reality that each one of us has lived with our parents and siblings and friends. When men fail, all of us suffer. 
So that video was uh, quite sobering, uh, and it brought uh, attention to many aspects of our society and here in America of uh, what we're going through with, with regard to uh, men. So what I would like to do is flesh out some topics that might assist in, in kind of rectifying the situation we have today. Um, and I will, will make videos and, and share things on the Orthodox Facebook page that, that uh, can maybe bring some help and some uh, insight into a change of direction on these uh, kind of very complicated but very uh, scary topics that we see uh, in, from that Tucker Carlson video. But to start, I would like to just highlight that there are several qualities that Christian men should uh, strive to have and should improve on each one of these. And if we do, then we can, we're heading in the right direction. So each Christian man should be uh, spiritually faithful. Uh, they should be mentally strong and disciplined. They should be physically healthy. Uh, they should be emotionally grounded. They should be morally principled. They should be financially responsible. And a Christian man should give honor to others. And they should strive to earn respect from others. If we focused on those qualities in manhood, then we would see a lot of these issues that Tucker Carlson points out start to fade away. And so my hope is that uh, we'll be sharing some insights on how to do that uh, going forward. So God bless you all. As always, please share uh, this video. Subscribe to it if it, you find it edifying uh, so that we can work to get out some more videos uh, to help. God bless you.